The greatest success story in space travel has a name, and it's not James Webb. No, because the two Voyager probes have actually been flying through the vast expanses of space for 47 years now, giving us ever new insights into unknown cosmic worlds. As humanity's most remote outposts, the identical sister probes have now even ventured into interstellar space, and they have shown us that the regions at the edge of the solar system are much stranger than previously thought. But how can the strange differences that the probes have recorded at the threshold of our home system be explained? And what about the gigantic, mysterious wrinkled structures lurking in the heliosphere? Looking back, 1977 seems almost like something from another world. Indeed, it was the year that Jimmy Carter became President of the United States, the last time the guillotine was used for an execution in France, and the cult film Rocky won three Oscars. But, as is well known, something else happened in 1977 that still spans the arc to the present day, the launch of the two NASA space probes Voyager 1 and 2. The first probe to bid farewell to Earth was Voyager 2. It set out on August 20, 1977, to explore the previously largely unexplored areas of our outer planetary system. Voyager 1 followed 16 days later on a different trajectory. But at the time, no one could have known that this was the starting signal for, by far, the longest-lasting mission in modern space travel. At the beginning of the program, it had not been planned at all that Voyager 1 and 2 would one day have an incredible distance of 24.63 and 20.59 billion kilometers, respectively, between them and the Sun. Because, as already mentioned, the probes had actually only set out to gather new insights into the outer planets of the solar system. And indeed, the endeavor was not even under a lucky star at first. Communication with Voyager 2 caused problems from the very beginning. Fortunately, however, NASA experts were able to quickly resolve the complications and finally pave the way for the record-breaking mission. Setting out for unknown worlds. Today, we live in a time in which the James Webb Telescope presents the outer representatives of our planetary system to us in an unprecedented level of detail. But almost 50 years ago, the situation was completely different. When Voyager 1 and 2 set out into space, our knowledge of the distant planetary worlds was, to say the least, limited. And so, it came to pass that the first items on the research checklist concerned the Jupiter and Saturn systems. Soon, terrestrial experts were enriched with many extensive measurements and numerous images. In the process, our understanding of the gigantic gas giant and the iconic ringed planet was taken to a whole new level. While it was then time for Voyager 1 to set a course for interstellar space, the further journey of Voyager 2 had a few more exciting stopovers in store. A corrective maneuver in the spring of 1981 sent the probe on its way to Uranus, which it reached on January 24, 1986. By this point, Voyager 2 had already exceeded its originally predicted lifespan by a factor of 2. However, since the spacecraft apparently didn't care much about earthly predictions, it not only took a close look at Uranus but also discovered ten previously unknown moons of the remote ice giant in the same breath. The next stop was to be Neptune, and this time, it was supposed to be the final chapter of the research mission. There were simply no plans to fly by any other destinations, which is why the more than 9,000 photos taken by Voyager 2 of the outermost planet in the solar system were, at the time, tantamount to a pictorial farewell. However, the probe did not just diligently take pictures of its surroundings but also added nine previously unknown satellites to the star maps. Triton, the largest of Neptune's moons and already known at that time, was to be examined in detail. In the course of this, Voyager 2 provided the insight that its diameter is not 5,000 kilometers, as previously assumed, but only 2,760 kilometers. Furthermore, it found that the brownish-white surface of the satellite had surprisingly few impact sites and that numerous geysers are dormant there, regularly spitting liquid nitrogen onto their surroundings. Arrival in Interstellar Space To reach the next milestone of the Voyager program, arrival in interstellar space, we have to turn back the clock a little to the year 2012. This is not surprising since this distant area, which the mighty arm of the sun can no longer reach, 
is not exactly around the corner. This distant cosmic realm is filled with interstellar medium, the most important components of which include dust and ionized atomic and molecular gas. And while these components together form the interstellar matter, the interstellar medium is completed by the galactic magnetic field and electromagnetic radiation. Voyager 1 passed the boundary of the solar system in 2012. Its sister probe followed in November 2018. Just as they once did on our planetary doorstep, the spacecraft are taking unprecedented measurements here. However, since the probes are not traveling in the same region, experts have had the exciting opportunity to study the interstellar medium at two different locations and compare them. Consequently, an important task of Voyager 2 is to check the data collected by its twin probe for similarities and differences. And indeed, a lot of information from Voyager 1 should be confirmed in this way. The density of particles in interstellar space, however, becomes even more interesting, not to mention confusing, when we look at the ways in which the probe's measurements differ dramatically. What Voyager has discovered To understand the Voyager discoveries properly, we first need to understand how the boundaries of the solar system are structured. Basically, there is a dynamic network of magnetic field lines around the Sun that is invisible to the naked eye. These, in turn, act as paths along which electrically charged particles are shot into space, forming the so-called solar wind. While the solar wind spreads throughout the solar system, it eventually reaches the interstellar medium. But just like oil and water, the solar wind and the interstellar medium do not mix perfectly. As a result, the solar wind forms a bubble in the interstellar medium called the heliosphere. Thanks to the Voyager data, we know that the heliosphere extends about 18 billion kilometers from the Sun into space. At the outermost edge of this region, called the heliopause, interstellar space finally begins. Before Voyager 1 entered the threshold of the solar system, practically nothing was known about this area. However, the findings that the probe sent to Earth immediately left researchers in a state of both amazement and confusion because many of their predictions had simply been wrong. For example, the interstellar magnetic field is almost three times stronger than previously assumed, meaning that the interstellar particles exert about ten times more pressure on the heliosphere than theoretical models had predicted. But as groundbreaking and novel as the Voyager 1 data may have been, it was also accompanied by a major drawback, the data was incomplete. This was due to the fact that the instrument for measuring plasma temperature onboard Voyager 1 has been defective since the 1980s. Fortunately, since the counterpart instrument onboard Voyager 2 was still functional, researchers were eager to see what information the second probe would collect as it approached the heliopause. The heliopause and interstellar medium. Today, we know that the plasma around Voyager 2 increased its density while simultaneously slowing down and heating up as it neared the heliopause. Beyond the heliopause, the interstellar medium reaches temperatures of almost 30,000 degrees Celsius, significantly hotter than scientists had predicted. However, since the plasma has an extremely diffuse and thin inconsistency, the temperatures around the space probes are surprisingly low. Furthermore, Voyager 2 found that plasma crosses over from interstellar space into the heliopause and in the opposite direction. When Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause, it encountered compact extensions of interstellar particles. Strangely, its sister probe, Voyager 2, was confronted with a particle stream that extends more than 150 million kilometers into the heliopause. No less puzzling is the fact that Voyager 1, approximately 1.3 billion kilometers before the heliopause, entered an area in which the solar wind slowed down noticeably. The Enigmatic Structure of the Heliopause All in all, these strange differences reflect only a fraction of the mysteries that remain to be solved regarding the edge regions of the solar system. For instance, we don't even know exactly what shape the heliopause has. At least now, however, we know that the heliopause is surprisingly wrinkled. After researchers at Princeton University registered an immense increase in solar wind pressure, almost 50% within a few months, they used this data to reconstruct the shape of the heliosphere and the heliopause. 
The astounding result revealed that the heliopause has gigantic folds extending tens of astronomical units into space. Just to recap, the length of an astronomical unit corresponds to the mean distance between the Sun and the Earth, approximately 150 million kilometers. This means the folds are several billion kilometers in size. No amount of Botox will help here, but perhaps the information experts have gathered about the origins of these wrinkle structures will. These folds result from high-energy particles that flow back in waves from the heliopause and collide with the solar plasma. Consequently, we now know that the heliosphere is not a static and unchanging entity but rather a dynamic one that constantly billows, dips, and unfolds. Indeed, these cosmic folds are even, chasing, the Voyager probes. As soon as the solar plasma smooths the fold structures, they continue to expand. However, despite the advanced age of the probes, Voyager 1 and 2 will be spared these folds because they are simply flying too fast to be caught by them and transported back into the inflating heliosphere. Yet, the chase of the folds means that the distance between the probes and the heliosphere is not growing as quickly as one might initially assume. And now, we would be delighted if the distance between your finger and the subscribe button shrinks much faster than you would initially expect. Feel free to click the thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.